God, as we lift your people up today, God, we lift them up to you. We lift up the sick and shed in God. Oh, God, I'm asking that God today that you would touch my aunt Chris. That God, that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, God. Oh, God, strengthen her, God, undergird her, send your angels to a camp around her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, blood cover in your blood, God. Blood cover in your blood, God. Continue to love on her. Oh, your Boshata. Continue to love on her, God. As you're loving on her, God, I'm asking that you will love on your, her, her sons and her daughters and her grandchildren, God. That you will move in a mighty, 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 mighty way. God, you're never failing. There's no evidence that you have ever failed. There's no evidence I, that you have ever failed. Because God, I know it when you do it your way, God. When you do it your way. Have your way, Lord. Just have your way, God. Yes, Lord. So God, as we're praying for her, God, I'm, I'm lifting up Pastor Terry, yes. Denise and Deborah. I'm yes. lifting them up to you, God, Eugene. Deacon Cannon, I'm lifting them up today. And God, whose name I may miss, that God, that is not here at this moment. God, you have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Lifting up Denise and Deborah's father, God. We lift them up, God. We lift up Jesse today, God. We lift them up today, God, that your will may be done. I lift up my uncle Eric, God, that you would touch his body. Elbow shot Oh, God, I lift myself up that you may touch my body. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, Lord. Lord. I lift. Come on, I need to hear more people say it. Lord. I lift. I lift. Myself up. Myself up. That you may heal me today. That you may heal me today, Lord. Oh, God, the wonderful Savior. 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 My Redeemer, the lifter of my head. God, you're just so amazing. You're just so amazing. You're just so amazing, God. I pray for my my brothers, my sisters. God, I pray for my friends and my foes. God, I want to send a special prayer up for my constituents. That God, that you will cover them. Because God, you are an amazing God. You're the one that bore the cross. You're the one that took on the cross so that we can be free so that we can be free so God you do it today you do it today so God if I were ask anything of you at this moment I'm asking for a move somebody so Lord I need a move today I need a move today I need a move today. I don't know what you need God to move out of your life, but Lord, I need a move today. I need God to move. Hallelujah. Because when God moves, there's a shift. That becomes a shift in the atmosphere. And God, I thank you. Because you are all consuming. I'm asking, Lord, that you will consume my faults and my failures. I'm asking, Lord, that you will consume my doubting spirit, my doubting mind. I'm asking, God, that you will do something in me that I couldn't do for myself. Help me to walk like you. Teach me to talk like you. Think, teach me to think like you. Teach me, Lord. Somebody say, I need a move. I need a move. Hallelujah. So God, today we open up to you. The I am that I am. Uh, the lifter of my head. Uh, God, you do it. Hallelujah. Yes. 
because I can't move on my own will. But when God began to move on my behalf, things begin to happen. People begin to move out of my So God, I thank you for change. I thank you for the change. The change in the move. See, because I want to share something with you real quick. Just when God moves, prophet is young. When God moves, there's a shifting of things that have been plaguing our lives. When God began to move on your behalf, things that block your way begin to open up. God said, I will, de I will part the people that have been plaguing your life, that has been keeping you from moving forward. I will come before you and I will begin to Get Jesus. Hallelujah. Because some of us, we not only need God to move the people, we need him to move things. Because some of us got some things that, that, that we need that we need to get rid of that we've been holding on to. Hallelujah. But when God get finished moving in your life, can't no devil, ain't no devil in hell. If you will open up to God, if you will open up your heart to God, believe me, he's a redeemer. He's a restorer. Hallelujah. That he'll fix it. Somebody say he'll fix it. He'll fix it. Because when you open up to him, when you open up to God, I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but when you open up to God, when you open up to God, things begin to happen. Things begin to happen. Things begin to happen. The supernatural begin to manifest right before your eyes because you'll start seeing things in your life fall off of your life. You'll start seeing friends and people that hung around you that plagued your life and that tried to suck the life out of you begin to deplete and begin to fall off of your life because when God is getting ready to do a new thing, he'll change. Today changes in the atmosphere. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's in the atmosphere and it's moving. And we praise you today. And we glorify you on today. Listen, I'm going to ask the praise team, those of you that are here, would you come on up? Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. <laughs> ah, let's give him a praise. Let's give him a, come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Give him Hallelujah. a praise. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's bless him one more time. Hallelujah, Lord. We come here today to God just to lift you up, Lord. This is the day that you have made, Lord Jesus, God. So we will rejoice and be glad in him. Hallelujah.
This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and hey. be glad. your name hallelujah we praise your name hallelujah we lift you high in this way yeah yeah all right we gonna take this down a little bit so we can be a little comfortable y'all Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and hey, be glad hallelujah, in it. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We lift you higher this place. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We lift you higher this way. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in hey, it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. So we say hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We lift you higher this way. Yeah. Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. And we praise, we your, praise name. your name. If you came to bless the Lord, you ought to stand up on your feet and just help us. Yeah. Clap our hands, stump our feet, and lift our voice. So lift your voice and say, Hallelujah. Clap your hands and say, Hallelujah. Do your dance and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, wave your hands and say, Hallelujah. Wave your hands and say, Hallelujah. Wave your hands and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, do your dance and say, Hallelujah. Do your dance and say, Hallelujah. Do your dance and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to wave your hands and say, Hallelujah. If he's been so 
bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We lift you up. Hallelujah. We magnify. Hallelujah. We glorify. Hallelujah. You are the Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the praise. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, clap your hands and say hallelujah. 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 Well, do your dance and say hallelujah. Well, do your dance and say hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody give God praise. Ooh. I need at least three or four people, if not everybody, to shout, Lord, we bless you. And somebody shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And truly, God's presence is in this place today. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is doing today in the atmosphere. He's stirring you up in your spirit, man, to praise him, to worship him, to magnify him. Hey, man, can you get our scripture on the board, please? Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing how the pastor is doing great things in our church Come on, give God some praise for the vision. That's a vision coming to pass. Amen. The words that write the vision make it plain that all who may see it may run with the vision. Amen. This is our vision. And I'm expecting God to manifest the vision for this house to bring it into fruition. And I don't know about you, but I know God will do it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Max, everyone, please stand for our scripture reading this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Say it again. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep our pastor family in prayer. They have an emergency right now that's taking place. So we want to just cover them in our prayers. So if you will, Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you right now for your spirit of truth and righteousness. We sing your anointing, God, to go with the man of God this morning, God, when he goes to the hospital, God, that when he lay hands on this, his, uh, his relative, she will recover in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We bind the spirit of death, oh God, that would try to creep in, oh God, to take her life. We believe, God, there's power in the blood. We plead the blood this morning, God, the blood of Jesus, that you would manifest, God, your power, God, to show yourself strong in her behalf oh God you said let the weak say I'm strong in the Lord and the poor say I'm rich and God manifest your glory and we thank you right now God in Jesus name amen 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 hallelujah Mark 11 chapter verse 22 been our scripture from beginning of the church when it first started out and it still rings in our hearing today the power of the word. I'm going to actually repeat after me. And Jesus actually said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. So whatever your mountain is, I was teaching this a couple of days on the prayer line a couple of days ago. And God began to speak to me. He says many people are dealing with issues and problems in their lives. And they dwell on it. The more power you give to the problem, the more it overpowers you. 
And Jesus says, I can speak to the mountain. Whatever your mind, it might be a financial deficit. You might have lost your job. You might have a loved one that's sick to death. It doesn't matter what your mountain is. He says, you speak to that mountain and it will obey you. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. He talking about everyone in this room. He says, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, he's not talking about the uprightness of an individual. He's talking about standing in an attitude of prayer. So when you stand praying, he says, here's the requirement to get an answer to your prayer. Forgive. Right? Forgive. If you have all against any, come on, I can hear you. If you have all against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses but if you do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespass and the word of the Lord is blessed Master at this time prepare your hearts for giving prepare your hearts for giving amen 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, King Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You get your offering in your hand. Won't you stand with me? The word says, when you give, it will come back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God is looking for a heart. That don't mind giving willfully, not out of necessity, not out of obligation, but he's looking for people who don't mind giving out of a response to the love that God has poured into our lives by giving you the resource to give. Amen? Because there's a lot of people, you look in the news, you can val validate this, that are poor. They're living in poverty. They're hurting. They're in pain. And yet our Heavenly Father, he chooses to bless us. Even in your worst state of life, God still bless you with health and strength, breath in your body. You're still able to move. Why? Because we're benefactors of the covenant that he made with us. We have a covenant keeping God and God don't mind blessing you because he loves us so much. And when you know that God loves you, you don't mind loving him back. You don't mind giving him what's due him, the worship and giving. He said, you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. That means a little bit. You only expect a little blessing in return. 
But when you give bountifully, that means over and above your intention to give what God has given you, when you sow bountifully, God says, you know what I'll do? I'll bless that bountiful giving and call it to be double fold. I've seen them do it in my life many times. All because of the obedience. Won't you stand on your feet? Stand on your feet when you get your offering. Won't you repeat this declaration? Repeat this declaration. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to run over in the earth till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Amen. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's your heart cry today. Fill me up. Fill me up. Yes, God. Yes, God. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. I want to run over. All right, please remain standing. Remain standing. We're going to our prayer and declaration. Hallelujah. Why don't you repeat after me? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the seed that I sow for the building of your kingdom. I believe that debts are being canceled, bills are being paid in full, that men are giving it to my bosom, and I live in the overflow. And I thank you that poverty and lack, it shall decease in my house because you are the covenant-keeping God. And I have a covenant with you that I'm blessed and highly favored. Therefore, I cannot be cursed. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. All right, we're going to go to our last declaration. I want someone to get on that wall. It's on this wall. We're going to believe God for the expansion and increase in all of our lives. Because I know God is going to do it. He's faithful according to your faith. That's what the word says. Your faith be it done unto you. So I want you to repeat after me. Lord, enlarge. My territory. Come on, put a little pressure in that thing. Lord, enlarge my territory. Come on, let's say it one more time. Lord, enlarge my territory. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I believe he'll do it for you and for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we glorify you. We believe, therefore, we speak and agree with your word that it shall come to pass. Amen, 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 amen. We got any announcements? Any announcements this morning? 
Any announcements? Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen. What happened to our mic over there? Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen, amen. Let's get that cord. everybody God is good all the time even in the midst of any storm he is good um, <clears throat> our announcements are as follows ministers and deacon class and deaconess classes every first Sunday at 10 a.m. from the past the redeemed faith fellowship men's prayer breakfast has has been awesome every second Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. If you want to get food for the mind, body, and soul, Redeemed Faith will be the place to be. The next breakfast is, is on January 14th, once again from 10 to noon. If you want to donate to the breakfast, please see either um, Pastor Emery. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can y'all hear me now? Pastor Emery. Or Minister Harris in his absence. Well, there goes Sister Harris back there. But um, the project, please do your part to help in the project. You can purchase stars on Facebook. You can donate. Um, you can use the vending machine downstairs. Just support Redeem Faith in this project. Y'all see? That's the project right there. We should be breaking ground sometime this year. God is good, and he's good all the time. Amen. 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 The food pantry open every second and fourth Tuesday. If you are in need of food before then, you can come to the pantry from Monday through Friday, with the exception of this Monday, because the office is closed, um, from 9 a.m. to 2.30, and we will be able to help you out then as well. If you have any food donations um, or clothing donations, please feel free to drop them off here at the church. A lot of people use the table outside. Feel free to do that. That is the whole community um, outside on that table because they come, they drop off, they pick up, they utilize that table even when the church is not open. So God is good all the time. Um, I just want to do a bathroom reminder. Just a reminder, let's remember that the upstairs bathroom are for, the downstairs bathroom is for, and if you should happen to dribble on the seat, please clean it, and always flush after every use. I know those are things that we should all know, but then some people forget, right? We're not saying that people forget on purpose, but sometimes you forget. Are there any other announcements? Any guests? Any guests in the house, please stand. No? Then these are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Before the, thank you for those announcements. Um, before the praise, you know, there's a verse of song I want to just do this morning. <coughs> I sang it before. Actually, I forgot the biggest announcement, and I do apologize. So for the fasting for um, this, the remainder of this month, um, we have written up um, guidelines as well as um, scriptures for each week. So if you need one, please see me. I know a lot of people got some, but they have been updated once again. So I have these for every family that need one. Amen. That's, I want to reiterate that, too. Um, those of you who are participating in the fast, we're going into the 29th of the month. 
the 29th of the month. We started on last Sunday. And I don't know if you've been, been going great. God is really blessing me in the midst of it, of the uh, fast with his word, with revelation. Every morning, I'm on the prayer line with my dad. And I many even know, my, I mentioned about my dad before, how he can't speak. He might come on and say, oh, Lord, Jesus, oh, Lord, Jesus. He might just say, yeah, oh, Lord, just because he can't really dialect what he wants to say to the people. But I thank God for touching my heart to come on there every day as an encouragement to him because I'm starting to see improvement. Little by little, God is doing something supernatural in his life. And that, that's the praise, praise report right there. You know, he has, amen, amen. Give God a hand praise for that. Every, every time he would have a seizure, it would set him back mentally some time, and it would take him like a few days to recap, you know, recalculate his brain to, to begin to do what he normally do in a normal response. So I just want to keep Pastor Emery, my dad, lifted up in prayer. We also want to keep Minister Joe lifted up in prayer, too. He's out sick today. It's a lot of people sick in this season. I got sick from the flu shot. Somebody else I know got sick from the flu shot. And it's, it's a lot of different things are happening, and we have to take care of our health. I'm just telling you some wisdom. Get emergency. It works. Because I hadn't been taking that emergency, I would have been worse off than I was. But because I trusted God through prayer and anointed myself and believing him that it's word for healing, he said, to, he says, I am the Lord, thank God, that healeth thee. And if God promises to heal us, we got to believe it by faith, by putting some action with, that, with the word of God. Faith without works is dead. So I got to do something in conjunction to the word of God for the word to manifest in my body to produce healing. Amen? Amen. I enter the holies of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to worship I am. And I worship you. I worship you. And I worship you. I worship you for your name is holy 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 lord how many believe that today for your name is holy 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 Lord of the Lamb, I enter to worship you only I enter to worship I am you are holy you are holy you are holy. You are holy. For your name is holy. 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 
holy Lord, for your name is holy, holy, holy. You are holy, Lord. So I don't know about you, but I'm a worshiper. I love to worship the king. See, when you find yourself going through oppositions, situations doesn't seem to pan out the way you expect God to move in your life. Found out just the other day, one of my cousins found dead in California. Don't know what happened. Another lady, week before that, her son playing basketball was murdered on a basketball court because he dunked in front of somebody else. See, when you find out all the troubles are going on in your life around you, you ought to get into that intimate place with God. And allow God to pour the oil of joy inside of you that in spite of the pain and the hurt and the sorrow, I still can worship you, God, because you're still good to me. You didn't take my life. You didn't let a tragedy kill me in a car accident. You didn't let nobody shoot me, God. But because you love me so much, God, you gave me another opportunity to worship you. Come on, act like you know him today. Come on, act like you know him today. Y'all too quiet in here today. The Spirit of God is moving in the atmosphere. God said, so you need to worship me. Come on, open up those mouths. Begin to praise God. Come on, open up your mouth. Praise God. Open up your mouth. Praise God. Because he wants your praise. For your name is holy. Holy. Holy Lord. Lord, I worship you. For your name is holy. Somebody need a breakthrough. I feel the spirit of God says somebody been crying out for God to move in that situation. But because you won't open your mouth and give God the worship. God says, I can't do nothing for you till you do something for me. The spirit of the Lord is in the atmosphere in this place. And God is trying to stir you up in your inner man to go through the pressures of life and the problems you may be dealing with. God is trying to motivate you today. He's trying to stir you up like a locomotive where you get more momentum, more momentum, more momentum, more momentum, more momentum, more momentum. You don't stop midstream. You keep moving forward. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt your name, God. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. It could have been your child. It could have been your family member who's dying of cancer. Pastor got an auntie dying of cancer. And y'all want to sit in the house of God like you don't know what you're doing. Why even come to the house of God? You didn't come for the purpose of worshiping him. He does everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. That's the word. When I'm going through an infirmity in my body, I found out when I worship the Lord, God shows up and he delivers just when I need him the most. Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. Willie Davis going through cancer. See, that's why I worship. I don't worship for me. I worship for everybody in this house. Because I know that in my response to the love of God, God is going to move in your stubborn life. We get stubborn in the house of God. And God says, I'm trying to get you out of your comfort zone. Will you worship me? It's not just for you. It's for your family members. It's for your children. It's for your community. It's for your finances. It's for your health. It's for everything. For your bloodline. So many times we've been attacked in our bloodline with curses. 
But God says today the cycle has to cease. Because I worship you. I adore you. My high Lord. Because I worship you. And my heart adores you. Oh, oh Lord. You know why? For your name is holy. Holy. Holy Lord. For your name is holy. You're holy. You're holy Lord. I understand now. I saw The Chosen a few days ago. It's a new TV series. And the woman with the issue of blood, she would probably come into town, connect with different people to wash their clothes to make some money. She knew she was in violation of the law, risking it all. That if I get caught in public, they're going to stone me to death. But she kept on coming until she went to one person's house and began to leak. The blood stopped coming down. And the man said, you may be unclean, so now I got to go in consecration for seven days because now I'm unclean because you're unclean. Get away from me. She was despised. She was rejected. She felt hopeless. She felt abandoned because people looked at her as unclean. But then she ran into a lady that knew Jesus. Said, take me to his disciples where they can show me where this Jesus is. Is that the one that does miracles? Is that the one been healing sick and raising dead folk? She said, I need to meet him. But she knew if I'm caught, I'm going to die. But you know what she did? She came to the crowd. Everybody thronging Jesus to run all up on him. He's trying to move through the crowd. They're just pressing all, all people touching him. All kind of people touching him. And she bowed down. And she began to crawl right into the midst of where Jesus was. And she touched. She said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, not him, his garment. She said, I know. That I'll be made whole. How many need healing today? How many need healing today? God says, your healings come through your faith. Just like she spoke to herself, you got to talk to yourself and tell yourself, self, my husband going to be healed. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be delivered. He's going to be delivered because I got touched the human of God by faith. And guess what happened? She touched him. Jesus, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody stop what you're doing. Just stop. Somebody touch me. Somebody touch me. And and, and disciples say, Lord, what you mean somebody touched you? You got all these people around you. Somebody touched you. He said, no, it ain't an ordinary touch because some power came out of me. When you reach heaven and you tap into the frequency where Jesus is, the power begins to be released into your situation. And God will move to heal you, to deliver you, to save your sons and your daughters, your grandchildren. He will do it according to your faith. I don't know why God took me this way, but I had to get this out. 
because I knew the worship was the, was the avenue to take me to prophetic word. And God says today, the worship will connect you to a prophetic word for your situation and will bring deliverance. And guess what? Restoration. Minister Lane, restoration is come to your house because of your faith in God. God says your healing is attached to the restoration. Everything you've been praying for and attacks are coming against you in your marriage, God says the devil is a liar because your restoration is attached to the promise. And what God has promised you, he said, I will do it in your life, not long time from now, but in this season. In this season, things are shifting in your marriage. God said, in this season, you're going to a higher elevation. In this season, the devil can't touch you because I put my shield around you. I'm protecting you. I'm covering you. I'm guiding you. I'm standing on my promise for you. Glory to God. Oh, God. Oh, shut up my city, Mosa. Oh, Jesus. See, sometimes we get too, too big of a hurry when we come into the house of God quick to get home to watch the football game, quick to go shopping, quick to fulfill our own agenda. But God says, when you wait on me, guess what happened? I'm waiting on you so I can pour into you the thing you've been crying for in your life He's I'm about to manifest it. He, he, I know your heart's desire, Khadija. He said, there's been some things you've been praying about. Nobody even heard your cry. When you cried by yourself, you were all alone sometimes. God said, I heard you. That moment in that dark place, you felt like it was hopeless. Like, what's the use? I don't want to sing no more. I don't want to praise no more. I don't do nothing, God, because I'm hurting. God says, I feel your pain because I'm a God who can consort, who can uh, be acquainted with your pain. But in the process, guess what? I'm turning around for you. I'm turning around for you. I'm turning around for you. I'm releasing a greater anointing upon your life, says the Spirit of God. There's a power about to fall upon your life, says the Spirit of God, like never before. He said, you got a glimpse of the anointing. But today, God says, I'm pouring to you a greater anointing. Because of your diligence. So your family is blessed. Your children is blessed. Everyone connected to you is blessed because of your connection with the Father. God said, keep doing what I called you to do in this season. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. You stand in there. Even when it gets tough and it gets dark, you stand. You know why? He said, I'm standing with you. I got my arm around you. I'm hold Charlene, go hold her. Go hold her. I, I feel the Spirit of God doing something right now. God says, I've been holding you for a long time. Even when you tried to let go, you couldn't let go of me. Even when you felt like saying, God, I feel like just giving up right now. I done tried this. I done tried that. The, the blessings, the business seem like it's not working. The thing you told me to do, don't seem like it's coming to pass. But God says, I'm showing you divine favor. There's a spirit of favor because the spirit of the Lord of God is upon you and has anointed you with his favor. And everything you're trusting God to do, God says it's going to be released in this season. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. I don't know about you, but I feel the fire in here today. There's a fire burning. There's a fire in this place today. And it's the spirit of the Lord. 
I hope you leave changed today. I hope you leave inspired, encouraged to keep trusting God and his word to manifest in your life and the life of your family. And I guarantee God will praise you. Come on for I know God is doing something in all of our lives. So doing this fasting, I want to say this one point, then I'm going to sit down. Read Isaiah chapter 58. That's a scripture that talks about the type of fast that God is looking for. When you study that scripture, don't just read it to be reading it, but read it with an expectation of God to speak to you by his spirit and watch God begin to draw you in to his presence through the word. And I guarantee you're going to see changes. It's going to feel uncomfortable, but God is going to do something extraordinary in your life during this fasting season. As we come together in one accord, his word tells us this is the type of fast I'm looking for to loose the bonds of wicked, to set the captive free, to open the prison for the of the, those who are bound. Because I'm doing it in your consecration. I have a friend, I have two friends in jail right now. And they've been calling me. They're pulling on me because they're anointing on my life. And I told God, I'm going to keep on be willing vessel to pour into their life every moment I get to speak to them, to encourage them to keep trusting God for their release. So I encourage you, let God do it in your life. Hallelujah, Lord, you're everything. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're our Prince of Peace, God, our Lord of Lords. Lord, we just adore you, God, for being who you are, Lord, our comforter, Lord Jesus, our shelter, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Say everything, everything. You're everything to me you're everything say to everything me. everything you're everything to me you're everything to me. you're my peace you're my peace you're everything to me you're everything to say me. everything Everything, you're everything to me. You're everything to so me. Life and prayer. Life and prayer. You're everything to me. You're everything to so me. You're my peace. You're my peace. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Say joy and sorrow. Joy and sorrow. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Say hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Joy and sorrow, joy and sorrow, you're everything to me, you're everything to me, hope for tomorrow, hope for tomorrow, come on, lift it up with us and say, say master, master, Savior, Savior, say ruler, ruler, redeemer, redeemer, yeah, yeah, shelter, shelter, oh, provider, provider, yes, deliverer, deliverer, say he. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. 
Say, call his name Jesus. Jesus. Oh, say Jesus. Call his name Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Say Jesus. Jesus. sing with me there's something about the name something about the name oh there's jesus. something about the name jesus something about the oh, name he jesus is the sweetest name i know it is the sweetest name i know i know oh, oh how i love the name oh, jesus 
Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Some people think I'm crazy, but, well, I just can't explain. It's a power I feel when I call his name. Said it's just like fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up, shut up in my bones. When the spirit gets to moving, it just won't leave me alone. There's something about the name Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something about the name Jesus. Oh, there's something about the name. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. It is the sweetest name I know. I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Some people think I'm crazy, but I just can't explain. It's a power that I feel when I call his name. It's just like fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Shut up in my bones. When the power gets to moving, it just won't leave me alone. There's something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. There's power in the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. There's power in the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. Oh, Lord, I know. I know. I get happy when I call on his name. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. How I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. I know. Oh, 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 oh. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, oh, oh. Sweetest name I know. It's 
Come on. Oh, how I love to dance you. Oh, how I love to dance you. Oh, Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. So, how I love to dance you. Oh, how I love to dance you. It's something about the name it of Jesus. It is the sweetest name. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. And what about the name of Jesus? It's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. It's healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, how I love the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It is the sweetest name. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. I know, yeah. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest
Something about an age. Something about an age. It is the sweetest name. I know. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, Lord. Oh, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Oh, Lord. 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 I tried him and I know it. I tried him and I know it. I tried him, I tried him. Yeah. I tried him and I know it. I tried him, I tried him. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Help me call Jesus. Call his name. Help me call Jesus. Call his name. Help me call Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Whatever you need, God's got it. He's a healer. Whatever you need, God's got it. Whatever you need, God's got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Senator Boss. Something about that name, Jesus. There's something about the name, Jesus. Holy Ghost power in the name of Jesus. Deliver us in the name of Jesus. Your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Shakarabako. He not about shining in the basse. He not about Kosan and the Oh, Shatamaha. Oh, Sanama Sinio Shay. Oh, Nanama Kosan and the Yeah, hey, hey. Oh, Sanama Mamma Mamma Maso. Hallelujah. Your presence is here, God. Your presence is here, God. Your presence is here, God. Yes, Sanama Say. Yes, Sanama Sanama Sia. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Y'all know God is in this place. Come on here. Stand to your feet. Come on right now. Come on. Get it up. Raise it up. God is here. Oh, he done too much for you to be sitting down. He did too much for you to be sitting down. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Stump on the devil's head. Stump on the devil's head. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Some of you don't want to dance, oh, but put your hands together. Victory, you don't victory, know like that, no. victory, what he done for me. victory, hey. victory, victory you is yours. Yeah. Victory, 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 
It's yours. Stomp on the devil's hand. Stomp on the devil's hand. Stomp on the devil's head for your breakthrough. Stomp on the devil's head. Stomp on the devil's head. Stomp on the devil's head for your breakthrough. For your breakthrough. Victory. 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 Victory is yours. It's yours. I 
come to give him praise. I come to give him praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Glory. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify Hallelujah. him. Oh, taste and see Hallelujah. that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man yeah. that trusts in him. Yeah. Oh, magnify yeah. the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He is glorified. Worthy. He is high and lifted up. He's reigning in majesty, yeah. arrayed in splendor. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But he yeah. Is He's worthy. Woo. He's worthy. He reigns. His word. He reigns. Oh, yeah. He reigns forever. Hallelujah. Forever, forever. He reigns forever. Forever, forever. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall forever be in my mouth because he daily loads me with benefits. He keeps on blessing me when the devil's on my track and he's trying to turn me back. I got to praise that I got to get it out because my praise is my weapon against the enemy. My praise is my sword of my defense. My praise is a shield round about me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Oh, yeah, Lord. hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. It's just Woo. something about the name of Jesus. Something about the name of it's Jesus. Something about the name of Jesus. Something about that something name. Something about that There's name power of Jesus. In that name. Oh, something. Woo. It really is something yes, about God. the name of Jesus. Yes, when you don't want to, he'll let you do it anyways. He gonna throw you out there anyways. When you don't, when you ain't trying to, there you go. Yes, There's God. Something about that name of something Jesus. Something about that name. When you don't want to get up in the morning, and he'll make you get up anyway. Amen. Amen. Just something Come on. about that name. Come on, give God some so, praise one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, shut up, city bush. Hallelujah. 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 There's a releasing in the spirit, and the angels are in agreement to offer your praise before God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're joining in the praise with us today. Hallelujah. The angels in heaven are rooting you on. They wait on you to give them assignment to bring forth your promise and fruition. To speak the word in the atmosphere over your children, over your family members. You got to speak the word. And the angels say, I will go and bring it to you. The thing you've been praying for. The thing you've been looking and trusting God for to do. God said, my angels, they watch over you all day and all night. I got angels watching over me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Woo. My God. Hallelujah. Oh, kata. Yes, kata mashay. Woo, glory to God. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a stirring in this place. There's a sweet spirit in this place. And it is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. 
moving on your hearts right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. If you could stand with me for a few moments, go right into the word. Oh, I must see. Woo! Jesus. Glory to God. There's an anointing in this place. There's the anointing in this place. It's the power of the Lord moving in the atmosphere. Whatever you need God to do, believe it and do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you're praying for, it will surely come to pass, and God will do it. Isaiah chapter 42, begin at verse 5. Isaiah chapter 42, begin at verse 5. Hallelujah, Jesus. It says, thus says God the Lord, he that created and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, that he giveth breath unto the people. You catch that? God give you breath. The people upon the earth. And the spirit to them that walk therein. Verse 6. And I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant to the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes and to bring out the prisoners from the prisons. Whew, glory to God. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. That is powerful. Verse 8. I am the Lord. Who is it? Who is it? The Lord I am. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Verse 9, behold, the former things are come to pass, and the new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. You may be seated. You may be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your presence in this place, O oh God. Anoint my heart to be the tablet engraved with your word to speak by the unction of the Holy Spirit, that you, God, would give us a rhema word that would carry us through the week, O oh God, when we're faced with oppositions, trials, and tests, that your word will encourage us. Your word will stir us up to trust you and keep us secure in your presence that we not lose our faith, but you stretch our faith and cause us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a prophetic word that God had given Isaiah the prophet to speak to the children of Israel. During this time, they were in Babylonian captivity. And they were starting to lose their hope. And God had to send a prophetic word to encourage them. Sometimes, when we're going through different situations in our life, we need a word. A friend might call you. Anthony might come and say, Pastor Emery, you know, God told me to call you. I have a word for you today. And it'd be just what I needed. Because God would touch her heart, his heart, her heart, his heart. He'd touch every individual in this place. And he'd give you a word for somebody. But a lot of times, we hold on to the word because of fear. We're afraid to release it, to tell the individual who God impressed upon your heart to call them or go visit them and share with them the word of the Lord. And it'd be the word that would sustain them, even a word that would carry them through their situation. So it says, thus says the Lord, this God said, I'm the one speaking. He that created, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
everything that exists. So I'm the one who created the heavens and stretched them out and spread forth the earth. Everything in the earth, he said, I breathe. The word of God is God breathe an inspired word in our hearts that we can apply to our lives to live. Did y'all catch that? It's a word God breathed upon you that you can hold on to that word so you can live. And a lot of times the enemy will make you doubt the word of God because he feels you're inadequate. The enemy feels you're not qualified for the word of God. And the thing God showed me this week, the greatest attack he brings against you is right here in your mind. To cause you to doubt the word of God because he knows if I can discourage you, deter you, distract you, I can stop you in your faith from believing the word of God. And God says, I'm the one that breathes in you. And he says, and spirit to them that walk therein. So my spirit is upon you. You got to understand in the Old Testament, the spirit of God did not dwell inside of mankind. It dwelt among them. So every so often the spirit of God would come upon a person. They would prophesy because of the Holy Spirit. But now because of Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit a relationship dwelling inside of us so I can speak the word of God. So when I'm in a destitute place, a dark place, a hurtful place, a painful place, I can find a rainbow word from reading the Logos. This is the Logos. The Bible is a handwritten book, but it has power. But it's only activated by the Holy Spirit when you read the word with an anticipation for God to speak to you. Then he says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant to the people. God says, I'm going to, I called you in my righteousness. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to give you to the people. He said, for a light Check this out. This caught my attention here. This one little part. It says, the light of the Gentiles. You got to understand that the Gentiles were considered the outcasts. So they were not part of the Abrahamic covenant that God spoke to Abraham for the children of Israel, the Jews. And because God gave them a word, so he says, I'm going to cause you to be an example to illuminate with the word I'm giving you to the Gentiles so they will be able to benefit from the same word. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. Then he says, I am. I love that. I am. The one who spoke in the beginning. I am. The Lord. And that is my name. When God told Moses, I heard the cry of my children in Egypt he says, and I have to deliver, so I am sending thee. So I want you to go to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh the I am, that is my name, has sent you to declare a word of liberty. We have to speak the word in our own families. I don't know why God keeps saying this to me about family, because somebody's family is under attack. I don't know what it is. But God says we got to speak the word to our families in order for them to have ears to hear what the spirit says to the church. You got the power of the word to speak, to change and save their life. Glory to God. Then he says, in my glory, the outward expression of who God is, I'm not giving to another. He said, neither my praise to those idols, graven images as idols. And a lot of us have idols in our life. You take a moment and sit down and think about it. You'll find out some of your life you love more than God become an idol to you. Can I bring it home? Social media. Facebook. Instagram. Twitter. We spend more time on social media than spending time in the presence of God studying his word and fasting and praying. Even though we're in a corporate fast, that many folks still ain't fasting. Because they feel, what's the use? What's that going to do for me? That ain't benefiting me. If I need to fast, well, I need to fast. God knows my heart. He knows what I'm going through. He knows how to deliver me. Why do I need to fast? Jesus told disciples, there's no need to fasting 
while I tarry with you. But there's coming a time when you're going to have to fast for yourself to be increasing your faith. And we're living in a time we can attest by looking at the news every day. People are dropping dead all around us. Somebody being murdered. Somebody being ran over. Somebody being robbed, being beaten. All this stuff is happening. Why? Because God is trying to shake up the church to come back together in one accord in a corporate fast. Not just in redeemed faith, but all over the world. That the people of God will begin to remember the Lord that God and serve him with their heart, soul, mind, and strength. But then he goes on, behold, let me pay attention. Let me captivate your attention. The former things are come to pass. What is it in your life that's former to you, you still holding on to? What is it that's from the past has crippled you for a season? What is it in your life got your mind stuck in an old relationship? What is it that got your life in a turmoil because you can't let go of the hurt people have done to you in the church? A lot of church hurt first. Folks, they hurt other folk. Because I've been hurt. I'm going to hurt Sister Deanie. I'm going to hurt her because she hurt me. So everywhere I go, I'm breathing pain on somebody else because of my own personal affliction. So because I've been scarred, I've been broken, I've been torn down, I've been talked about, I've been ostracized, I've been beat on. I, I, I feel that nobody cares about me, so I don't want to care about Prophet April. So when I come around her, I'm just going to breathe my negativity on her, my toxicity that's toxic. So I'm going to tell, tell you something toxic about her so you can stop loving her. We do it all the time in church. We talk about one another instead of doing the words that pray in all men of prayer in behalf of all saints in the spirit. So I don't pray for them in the spirit. I gossip about them. So I pray on them. Holy Ghost, you speaking today. P-R-E-Y. I pray on anyone in the church that I don't like because I don't like the way they look at me. I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like the way you didn't speak to me when you walk through the doors. So I'm mad at you. I don't even want you to be around me. So when I see you coming, I'm going around Sister Sam because I don't want to talk to her. And God is saying the former thing. I'll come to pass. And the children is their problem was God was bringing a message of hope to their living them, but they were stuck in the mentality of Egypt. And God is saying, and a new thing, a new thing, what is your expectation you're looking for God to do in your life? What is the new thing you need God to do for you in your children? What is the new thing you need God to do for you in your marriage? What is the new thing you need God to do for you in your community, in your church? What is the new thing you need God to do for you? God puts it this way. New thing do I that I am. Declare. You ever made a declaration to yourself that I declare I ain't going back to the old no good knucklehead man no more. I declare I ain't going back to the old jacked up woman that I used to be with. I declare I'm not going back to the old job no more. Even though God said go back anyway. I don't want to go there because they hurt me. They fired me. All this stuff. And God said go back. So we get in the place in our minds. We say nope. I ain't doing it. I don't care that's what you say, God. I'm going to follow my own leadership. I feel my spirit leading me. You're right, your spirit. Because your spirit is the way of a transgressor. When God speaks a word, he says, the way of a transgressor. That means I go against what God told me to do. It's hard. But he says, well, the path of the righteous, check this out, it's a smooth plane. So the crooked place in your life is I'm going to make it straight. And the rough place is I'm going to make it smooth. But then he goes and says, I declare. He said, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So you can't tell me God don't speak to us. 
It says it right here in the book that I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go to chapter 43. Then I'm going to go to Philippians. Chapter 43, 18 and 19. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, bless your name, God. Here's another word God gave me in the last couple of weeks. I've been studying this script for many years. I've preached it many times. And God says, this is somebody in the house today. They need to hear this. Remember. Say the word remember with me. Remember. Remember ye, talking about you, not. So look at your neighbor and say, remember not. The former things. Because that's what he's talking about. Neither consider the things of old. Why? I, I, I pondered this for a while. I said, God, why do you say don't remember the former things of old? And he says, he says, don't, don't remember them. I said, why, God? You know why? We get paralyzed with the former things. You ever seen a person paralysis? They can't move. They might can move the waist down. They can't move waist down. But they can move the upper torso. Or they might be paralyzed from the neck all the way down. They can't move at all. But they still got to move their head. They still can speak. They still got eyes to see. got ears to hear. The enemy does the same thing in the body of Christ. He'll cripple you. He'll paralyze you to prevent you from walking forward in the promise God has for you in your life. So when the enemy comes to do, he'll doubt God's word in your mind. He'll tell you God don't care about you. God don't love you. God don't, 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 don't matter in your life about anything you're doing. I can do whatever I want to do. God going to love me anyway. How many of you heard that before? I can do whatever I want to do. God going to still forgive me. How many of you heard that before? I can do whatever I want to do and God going to forgive me. Ain't too many with All right. I'm good. Good. Y'all, y'all agree with that. Because one thing about it, Godly sorrow draws men to repentance. So God cares about a repentful heart. If I repent for my wrongdoings and I meant it, he cares about you. Glory to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then he goes and says, behold, I will do a new thing. The same thing you just said in 42. Behold, pay attention, be on guard, be alert. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. He said, first he said, I will tell you before it spring forth about what I'm about to do in your life. But now he says in 43, now it shall. It's a difference. He declared it before, I'm going to do something. But after the declaration, he tells you now it shall spring forth. That thing you've been praying for, that house you've been looking for, the new job you need, the increase in your finance, healing for your husband or your wife, healing in your body, healing for your children, bring that wayward child back home, bring that child who went caught up in the gangs and drug activity. He says, now it shall spring forth. You know what, it, what God's saying? Persistence. You have to have persistence. No matter how challenging it becomes in your life, you still need to have persistence. Don't quit. Keep believing God, even though it don't look like God going to answer. Dark clouds coming like pig pen and Charlie Brown. And when we had dark cloud follow him, God said, even though a dark cloud follow you, everywhere you go, you still keep on having persistence. He said, shall ye not know it? It's a question. He said, now it shall spring forth. Then he asked a question. Shall you not know it? Are you going to be aware of what I'm doing in your life? Are you going to pay attention to what I'm doing in your life? Are you going to really listen to me? Or are you going to continue to be a backslider? Keep on transgressing my law. Then he goes on and says, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the deserts. So God says that dry season, you know, wilderness is dry. It's a desert. It's like a desert. He says in that wilderness, like the wooded areas in the wilderness, like going into the to the uh, forest somewhere. But the desert is, de is sand, where the sand, the hills, and all that stuff, it's just dry, no water. God says, I will make a way 
when you get lost in the woods, we get caught lost in the woods of life. We get discarded by all the stuff that look like trees in the world of sin. The trees of sin. God said, we get, get lost in that stuff. But he said, because you love me and I love you, I will even make a way in the wilderness. And rivers, he didn't say a river. You got to pay attention. The plural word, more than one, rivers. So what he's talking about is when I begin to manifest my deliverance in your life, like a rivers, like the rivers, he said, the river going to flow through you. It's going to flow to your children. It's going to flow from the children to the mother, flow from the mother to the grandma, going to flow to her children because they're going to keep on flowing. And that's the anointing. God says the anointing is rivers that I'm going to pour into your life when I do the new thing, declares the Lord. Woo, glory to God. Preach myself happy on that So in other words, my children shall be blessed. My descendants shall be blessed. My bloodline shall be blessed. My grandchildren, great-grandchildren shall be blessed. Why? Because the rivers of the anointing is flowing in our lives. And God said, everybody in the house of the Lord today connected to the shepherd in this place, the rivers is flowing in your life. Glory to God. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Father. So God says, when you have an expectancy and you begin to look to the hills which comes your help, doesn't matter what you're going through in this life. Doesn't matter about the burdens on your shoulders and the yokes on your neck. God says, I will declare my word over you and deliver you and set you free. Go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Oh, my God. Father, you're good. We're going to 13, Philippians 3, 13. He said, brethren, that means brother and sister, not just gender. He says, I count not myself to have apprehended. I don't know everything. I haven't figured it all out. I can't fix my problems. I can't change my situation. But this one thing that I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and are reaching forth unto the things which are before. So you get a revelation of Jesus going to the cross. You understand what Paul was talking about. I've been beaten. I've been left for dead. I've been shipwrecked. I've been bitten by vipers. And every time the devil tried to knock me out for the count, something on the inside kept stirring me up to keep on moving forward. I don't know everything, but one thing that I do, I forget all the problems that hurt me. I forget about all the people that scandalize my name. I forget about all my haters and persecutors. I keep holding on to the word of God because I know I'm reaching forward for those things which are before. But one thing I do in the midst, I press my way forward. I press toward the mark of the pride, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand for that prize of the high calling in Christ. We have a calling on our lives. We got a high praise connected to the high calling on your life. When you know that you know that you know that God brought you out of a situation you couldn't figure out for yourself. You might have been in prison one day and you thought you'd never get out. And all of a sudden, God touched the juror and he touched the judge's heart to plead your case with the prosecutor to let you go free. I come to tell you today that my God is a deliverer as I keep reaching forward to the expecting hope that's in Christ Jesus. I'm not looking back no more. I'm not going back to the old ways of filth and sin. I'm moving forward in sanctification. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been sanctified. 
filled with the Holy Ghost, and therefore reaching for the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Because he's good, he heard my despairing cry. One day I was sinking far from the peaceful shore, sinking to rise no more. But all of a sudden, there was a lifeline that threw out in my direction. It was a lifeline at my disposal where I could reach forward to the calling of God. I could reach and find my deliverance. I could reach and find my healing. I could reach and find my breakthrough because of the love of God for me. I don't know about you. Uh, sometimes I get in a dark place and, and I begin to cry all night long. But I heard the Lord. He told me, hold on my child. Everything is going to be all right. I'll dry the tears from your weeping eye. I'll call the pain in your body that's plaguing you to give you peace. Because I am the God of peace. All it takes is one word and a determined heart with persistence to keep reaching forward. Keep on reaching forward. Like the woman is your blood, she reached forward, touched the hem of his garment. Like the disciples on the ship that reached forward to Jesus to deliver them when the ship was going through a storm. I come to tell you today, uh, your storms may be raging. They may be critical. They may feel like you're about to be destroyed, about to lose your mind. All hell breaking loose in your life. You feel, where is God when I need him? And God seemed to be quiet like he not listened to me. There's many times I prayed. It seemed like God wasn't going to answer me. But I come to tell you sometimes when God is quiet, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get realigned with the spirit. Then you can tap into the kingdom. Begin to declare the word of God over yourself. And God will answer you. He will deliver you. He will set you free. Because it's, I love you with an everlasting love. That's eternal. How many of you experience eternal love today? You ever experience eternal love? Where God just loves you so much, even in your mess. He keeps loving you even any way you forsake him. When you turn your back, him, he still loves you. And he's right there. He's right there just like that. On that cross. It says, if any man desires, you have a passion, you have a desire to come after me. He said, let you first deny yourself. Take up your cross. It costs to follow Jesus. You lose your job. You lose your money. You lose your marriage. You lose your car. You lose everything because he loves you. And the enemy knows that God loves you, so he got to attack you to deter your faith from trusting in God. So when cancer hit my body, I said, Lord, you told me in your word I will not die but live and declare the works of God. You're looking at a miracle. I stood on this word. Prophet Charlene a miracle. Sister T, a miracle. Willie is a miracle. Man, I'll be done in the physical, but God says in the spirit, it's already done. Because we believe and we come together and believe for our brother's condition. God says, I would do it. Because if my people shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear for heaven to give the sins. Heal his land. His body is his land. It needs healing. Because we come together in one accord 
he going to heal his land. That's the promise we have with our God. Somebody need, need that word today. We want to keep lifting up Pastor Auntie Christine. We had a chance to go visit her a couple of days ago. And that woman is a mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of God. Strong in faith. Dr. Gabriel, over a year ago, she wasn't even going to last. But three months, she outlasted what the doctor said because of her faith in God. I know what my God can do. I know he can do it for anybody else. She told us, we made us all laugh. She said, you know, I've been trying to lose all this weight I had on me for years. But guess what? It's all gone now. She was in good spirit laughing and joking. And I told her, I said, woman of God, she made this one statement. So I don't know if God going to let me in because I cussed. And me and Pastor looked at each other and we said, God knows your heart. He already got you as his child. Your cussing ain't going to stop him from loving you and walk me in the kingdom because he's still a deliverer. And she said, I made myself right before God before I die. And that's a word we all need to get right before your time comes. And then she told her children, my desire is all of you get back in church. She told her children that. And that's what should be our desire to get our children in church. This church should be full of teenagers and young people. But many of them have drifted away. But I come to tell you, if he did it before, he'll do it again. Amen, amen. Brother William, I'll close out for the Facebook. You go ahead and turn it off in just a minute. So those of you who are watching via Facebook today, I pray that God speak to your heart today. You might be in a dark place, stuck in the past, and can't seem to progress in the future what God has for you.